I'm K.W. Keene. Welcome to Rock Music History Lesson. Today, the story behind We're an American Band by Grand Funk Railroad. One of the greatest bands in rock and roll history is Grand Funk Railroad, also known as Grand Funk. The group was a rock and roll juggernaut. By 1972, Grand Funk Railroad sold over 10 million records in two years. On June 5, 1971, tickets went on sale for their concert at New York Shea Stadium. The only other band to play Shea Stadium was the Beatles back in 1966. Grand Funk was so hot, the show sold out in 72 hours. The band consisted of Mark Farner, guitar and vocals, Don Brewer, drums and vocals, and Mel Shocker on bass. By 1972, Grand Funk became a quartet after adding keyboardist Craig Frost, who played as a sideman with the band, a full-time member. Their first number one single was We're an American Band. What's the story behind We're an American Band? Before We're an American Band, Grand Funk was selling millions of records, but not seeing the money. They fired manager Terry Knight for making shady investments, and he sued for breach of contract. Instead of being tied up in courts for years, the band settled out of court. Knight kept the money and almost everything else, including all the publishing rights to all of Grand Funk songs he had already published through his own company. The band got to keep their name. They were now faced with their biggest challenge, starting over. At the same time, Grand Funk realized the music business was quickly changing. Album-oriented rock radio was fading. Radio stations and rock fans were embracing a more polished pop rock sound. The songs had to be around three minutes long with a catchy hook and commercial value. Drummer Don Brewer said with all this going on, he had to give writing and singing a try. In an interview with American songwriter, he said, quote, We were on planes all the time, flying into these towns. I remember looking down at the ground and that thought came to my mind. We're coming to your town. We'll help you party it down. Because that's what we're doing. That's what this band does. Unquote. The line, the young Chiquitas and Sweet Sweet Connie was about four groupies showing up at the airport in Omaha. Brewer came up with a line about staying up all night playing poker with Freddie King, the blues man, because it was true. The band stayed up all night playing poker with Freddie. Freddie was the opening act for the Phoenix tour. Brewer said he didn't come up with the title, We're an American Band, until the song was finished. Mark Farner has a different side of the story on who wrote We're an American Band. Farner told songfacts.com that he heard the opening drum track in his head. He also takes credit for the chord changes and the cowbell. After they recorded We're an American Band, Farner said Don Brewer came to him and said he had never had 100% writing credit on any song and asked if he'd mind if he took this one. He said he's regretted this move over the years, but he's a nice guy and didn't want to screw it up. Singer-songwriter Todd Rundgren was hired as a producer in 1973 for their next album, We're an American Band. The single was released in advance of the album on July 2nd, 1973. Rundgren said weeks later, the song cracked the top 10 and not long after that, later climbed to number one on the charts before the album was finished. Other hits followed. Walk Like a Man. The Locomotion, their second number one was Some Kind of Wonderful, and Bad Time. If you're enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button. By the summer of 1976, disco ruled the radio. Mark Farner said, quote, We could not bow our knee to the god of disco. Grand Funk doesn't disco. The band was tired and called it quit in 1977. 
Mark Farner pursued other interests, including recording Christian music, while Don Brewer, Mel Shocker, and Craig Frost formed the short-lived band Flint. After Flint broke up, Frost joined Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. Don Brewer joined in 1983 and again in 2006 and 2007. In 1996, Grand Funk Railroad reunited for a reunion tour that lasted a couple of years. Mark Farner tells LivingLegendsMusic.com that after a show one evening, they're celebrating when Don Brewer suggests that all the members should sign their ownership of the trademark into the corporation so it would have an umbrella of protection. Farner thought Brewer was his friend, so he signed his one-third ownership into the corporation, not knowing this would haunt him. When Farner toured as a solo act, he would promote himself as Mark Farner, formerly of Grand Funk Railroad. The other two members filed an injunction against him, and he had to go in front of a federal judge because of infringement on the trademark. The two other members voted him out of the corporation, and Farner has no say-so or anything to do with the brand. Like us, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We'll let you know when a new episode is uploaded. Also, check out our website, rockmusichistorylesson.com. I'm K.W. Keene. Thanks for watching Rock Music History Lesson.